Penetration testing isn't cheap. You might have expensive consultants come out and spend days, weeks, even months testing of your systems to make sure they're secure. And you want to make sure that you're getting the biggest, best value for money that you can. Get the most value out of your penetration test. And one of the best ways of doing that is to properly prepare for it. Hey, this is Matt Strong from Volcus, and I'd like to show you how you should be preparing for your penetration testing. When I was a kid, I had this thing where I wouldn't normally brush my teeth before going to the dentist. See, I'll be thinking the dentist would be going, this kid doesn't wouldn't normally brush his teeth like this. He's trying to get one by me. I'll be thinking that I'll just be the honest person and go to the dentist the way I would normally be at this time of afternoon. I never really considered that maybe the dentist would appreciate doing his work in a clean mouth rather than a dirty mouth. I didn't really think that maybe the dentist doesn't really care about whether I would brush my teeth normally or not. In a way, it's the same with penetration testing. See, there's a lot of vulnerabilities that you might already know about. You might think, maybe I should be patching around about now. Maybe I should be reconfiguring these systems to be more secure. For us, we'll be thinking, yeah, go ahead, do that. We don't want to give you a report full of vulnerabilities that you already know about. That includes things like running vulnerability assessments and automated penetration testing tools and fixing all those vulnerabilities that you, you might find. That's the first thing we'll do in a penetration test anyway. And so you might as well make sure that we're not going to give you the results that would normally show up on those kinds of tools. And instead, we'll spend our time looking for the harder to find stuff. See, in penetration testing, you only have so much time. You only have those five, 10 days. You've got to make sure that we spend those five or 10 days finding the hard to find vulnerabilities that you don't know about, rather than just looking for the vulnerabilities that you already do know about. And so step one for preparing for your penetration test is simply to improve the security of your systems as much as you can before you get it tested. And for step two, let's just back up a bit. As much as we try and put in safeguards for our penetration testing, penetration testing does have its inherent risks. We will run automated tools, brute forcing attacks, password sprays, the kinds of things that real hackers will run. And those tools do have their risks. Even things like that five-year-old exploit that is tried, tested against hundreds of systems can sometimes suddenly bring down that one system despite us being pretty sure that it won't. And so for this step, make sure that you've got your backups in place and your business continuity and plan in place. And I know, look, I know we're all perfect at doing backups, but I think before a penetration test is one time to make sure that you're especially perfect at it. Part of this is also about good communication. Make sure that your tester knows, for instance, if there's a system that just cannot go down. This, the penetration tester can be agile and take that into account. Make sure the tester knows that, for instance, if there's a certain link to a remote office hidden on your network that doesn't have the best throughput, for instance, regional offices and campuses, so that the penetration tester knows not to send use automated tools to send large amounts of traffic that way. With good communication, you can stop those sorts of issues from happening before they happen. And also, make sure you're backed up before the penetration tests. So step two, make sure you're backed up, got good communication with a tester around potential availability issues, and have your business continuity plans in place. I'm going to say something that should be pretty obvious. If the tester doesn't have access to something, then that thing won't be tested. That could include things that require user accounts, access to the networks that might be hidden behind firewalls. You might include things like remote regions, remote offices that aren't connected over some kind of WAN or virtual private network. All of those things that a tester doesn't have access to won't be tested. And so you have to plan for this. 
You have to make sure that the tester has the access they need to deliver the testing that you want. That could include creating user accounts, even privileged user accounts, if you want the tester to test from the perspective of an admin user. It could include poking holes in firewalls or adding them to the IP allow lists. Uh, time limited, of course. You won't take those away at the end of the testing. It could include even physically getting the tester to stand up, go to another part of the building or another location and connecting back in. You need to plan for all of this access to make sure the tester will have the access they need to test the systems you want them to test. And make sure you, for tests that require an internal component, make sure that you plan for that. Make sure they have a desk, make sure they have an ethernet port. Wireless isn't preferable unless you are testing the wireless. And make sure that they have the pass to get in and out. And even better, make sure they know where to get lunch. So step three is to make sure the testers have all the access they need to do the testing. One of the main differences between penetration testing and red teams is simply a matter of stealth. In red teams, you're supposed to be stealthy. You're supposed to make sure that no one knows what you're doing. And because of that, you have a very wide period of time. You might do scans that take weeks even. And to make sure that the scan is so slow and so quiet that no one notices. Penetration testing is the opposite. In penetration testing, you only have so much time. And because you only have so much time, you just go at it. You use brute forcing tools, you use all these automated tools to make sure you get the widest coverage in the shortest amount of time you can. And so we're not trying to be quiet at all. And detection teams that aren't expecting the penetration test to happen might go, what is happening here? Someone's trying to hack our network. And this can cause issues. And so for step four, I recommend that you tell people about the tests, tell people that it's happening. Penetration testing isn't really designed to test your incident response routines. If you're looking to test your incident response routines, we do have services at Volcus that add on to penetration testing, like pen test response and detection alert testing. But for all your standard uh, penetration testing, you've got to make sure that everything, everyone who needs to know about it does. And this especially includes third parties. With third parties, you need to make sure that you get permission to hack their systems. And as a penetration tester, I can tell we're not fond of getting arrested because the appropriate permission, sign off, terms and conditions haven't been put into place. And so you'll go contact any third parties that might be affected by a penetration test and make sure that you've done all the permissions, sign off, make sure that appropriate terms and conditions and rules of engagement have been agreed upon. And so step four, is to tell all the different people that you need to tell that the penetration testing is happening. Now we're on step five. Who should the penetration tester tell if they find something? Communication with a penetration tester is really important to make sure that you get the most out of your testing. And when I'm talking about communication, I'm not just talking about the technical. I'm talking about how what they're testing fits into the rest of the business. For instance, if they're testing a trading application, is that trade important? Is the integrity of that trade important? How about making sure that website is up? Is that important? The tester might not necessarily know that. So you need to give all the context of the system that they're testing to the tester and make sure that they know all the details of what they're testing. And with that, they will be able to provide that additional consulting that you need. But it also does get into the technical as well. Now, I'm not going to give my rant about white box versus black box testing. I'll leave that to another video. But really, the tester's not here to show off. They're not here to spend time trying to find out what they should potentially already know. They're here to find potential security issues. And the more information they have about the technical nitty gritty of the system, the easier it is to find those security issues. That could get to the point of code assisting penetration testing where they're testing an application and you provide them the source code of that application. Communications with the penetration tester should 
be more formalized into some sort of comms plan. The comms plan should include a technical contact and a business contact so that if a penetration tester needs more information, then they know who to call. And it should include an escalation matrix. So if the tester finds a critical vulnerability, then the tester can call you, make sure that you have the information you need to start remediation as quickly as possible. And so to wrap up, here's five things you should be doing to prepare for your penetration testing. First things first, make sure you improve the security of the systems that you're looking to test before the test. We don't want to tell you everything that you already know about the security of your systems. Step two, back up all of your sensitive systems. Make sure that if something does go wrong, then you have the backups to handle it. Step three is to arrange the appropriate access for the tester and make sure that they have the access they need to test all the systems. Step four is to let all the people that need to know, know, and that especially includes third parties. And step five is to make sure that you've got good communication with a tester and the tester has all the information they need to test the systems they have. I've linked a couple of things below. I've linked our welcome pack, which we send to all organizations before they get penetration testing with us. That's freely available in our handbook and you can just download it and link below. I've also put in a blog post, including a checklist on what you should do to prepare for penetration testing. If you have penetration testing come up, then give us a shot, contact Volkus and we'll be in contact with you. Just use the contact us form below. And otherwise, uh, this was Matt Strawn talking about how to properly prepare for your penetration testing and good luck for your upcoming test.